Hello, I'm Dr. Ebenezer Ankara from the Department of Information Studies, and I'll be taking you through this course, Info 329, which is Database Management System. This course is made up of 13 sessions, and I'll be taking you through each session at a time. I want to start with the first session, that is Storage and File Structures. Now, when you're talking about storage and file structures, we are talking about the storage of data on different media and also the way it is saved and stored. Several types of data storage exist in most computer systems. These storage media are classified by the speed with which data can be accessed by the cost per unit of data. And of course, with this, we'll be looking at the characteristics that underline storage media and also trying to explain the various data structures that will be used for fast assets of data retrieval. At the end of this session, you understand the basic concepts underlying different storage media and also basic concepts underlying different file structures and organizations of records in files. You also be able to understand how fiscal storage media are classified. And of course, you'll be able to explain the hierarchy in terms of storage and file structures. The key topics to be covered in this session are fiscal storage media, RAID, which is an acronym, and then file organization. For this session, these are the reference lists and it will be made available on Sakai and other important and relevant materials for your perusal. Now let's start with the first topic, physical storage media. The main memory stores data in a temporary manner and therefore there is a need to look at other permanent and non-volatile storage to keep data permanently. Therefore, we use the storage media or devices that are termed auxiliary or secondary storage devices for saving and storing data permanently. With this, there are certain advantages of the auxiliary and storage devices or the secondary storage devices. One, they are not volatile. When data is saved on these secondary storage devices, they cannot be eroded, volatilized, or cannot be erased. Again, there is a mass storage capacity for these secondary storage devices, and you can save so much on these storage devices. You can save even in excess of terabytes. Now we have moved from the kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and we are in the terabytes, and these devices has those capacity. Then it is also cost effective in terms of the economic purchasing of these storage devices and, of course, usability. When you are talking about the storage devices, we can talk about three main types of storage devices. And, of course, I'm talking about the auxiliary or the secondary storage devices. One, we can talk about the magnetic tape. We can talk about the second one, which is the magnetic disk. And then you can talk about the optical disk. For the magnetic tape, it is used for backup purposes, which is similar and phenomenal with the normal tapes that are used at uh, various houses. Just that its size and capacity is different, and it's used for different purposes. For backup purposes, for normal data storage, and what have you. We can also talk about the magnetic decks, of which the storage Capacity is also high. We can talk about the hard disks, mobile hard disks, and other disks, all making up the magnetic disks. The third one is the optical, and the optical uses what we call the optical technology, and it always encompasses the compact disks and then the DVDs. These are higher level storage devices that uses the, um, what we call the random access to assess data 
on these devices. Now for RAID, we're talking about the redundant arrays of independent decks, and these are used to free some of the space on max storage. And of course, the main idea is to improve on the reliability of any redundant or any unused space in the hard disk or in any of the storage devices. Of course, different RAID levels exist from zero up to six. And we also have the cost, the performance, or affecting the RAID. File organization. A file is a collection of data usually stored on disks as a logical entity. A file enables you to divide your data into meaningful groups. For example, you can use one of these files to hold all the company's products. And of course, you can spread it on different storage devices. The term file organization refers to the way in which data is stored in a file. And Consequently, the methods by which it can also be assessed. So when we're talking about file organization, we're talking about how the data is arranged and also how it can be assessed. File organization is the method or the methodology which is applied to structured computer files. Files contain computer records which can be documents, or information which is stored in a certain way or for in a certain manner for future use. So we're talking about the arrangement, we're talking about the methodology, and then we're talking about the retriever in terms of file organization. Now, there are different types of file organization. We can talk about the heap file organization, we can talk about the hash file organization, the index sequential access methods, and then we can also talk about the B plus tree and then the cluster file organization. Now, when you're talking about the heap file organization, is a form of organization, file organization, where the files are added to the existing file, irrespective of the arrangement. So it's like first come, first serve manner. So you have the file, and then if you have another file to store, it is added upon it, and then is also used in the same way of retrieval. If you want to retrieve, you have to start from the beginning to the end. So for the hash file organization, as I've said already, it uses a function that does the calculation as to where the file will be saved, where the data will be saved, and also how it could be retrieved. Unlike the heap that has the first come, first serve structure. The index sequential access method also creates an index structure that it is used to arrange the records and it can be used to assess as well. So here there is also a formula or there is a key, a function that is used to store the data and also it is used to follow in the retriever manner. The B plus is the data structure to store vast amount of information. Typically, the deep plus trees are used to store amount of data that will not fit in the main system memory. So when you have a very voluminous, large amount of information data, the B plus structure is the best for the arrangement of the data. And then we also have the cluster, the cluster tables. The, for the cluster tables, they are used in oracles. They are used in other big saving structures and some DBMS, that is database management system, also support these clustered tables. And information or data are stored in tables with related links, and it could be applied to a very large amount of information. Now, in short, we have looked at the structure and the organization of data. These are also references for you. Make sure you log on to the Sakai platform and then read all the recommended tests. I'll see you in the next class as I discuss the advantages and disadvantages of database management system.
Bye-bye.